All right, it's time to talk about queues. Now, compared to a stack, a queue is a little bit different. Uh, we're still going to be using an array as the base. Uh, the only difference is we're going to be, you know, treating it with different rules. Uh, so the actual layout and the methods and programs that we're going to need for this are going to be a little different. Uh, they're actually going to be a little bit more complex. If you remember, a stack is basically a stack of boxes. A queue is a line. The first person in the line comes out. The next person is now the front of the line. Uh, anyone that wants to get in the line gets behind everyone else. So one thing this has that's a little different than a stack. A stack I have a clear bottom of the stack, which is the first thing I put in, and a clear top, which is the maximum size. A queue, on the other hand, if I put something in, you know, let's say it goes in the slot zero, that's the first thing that's going to come out, right? Uh, the next one comes in line, it goes in the one, two, three, until I get to the end of the line. Now, if I take the first thing out, that means zero is now empty the first person in line is now one. So I have to keep track of the front. Whoever the front's gonna be, that's what I gotta keep track of. So I need a, a front variable to keep track of who is the person that's gonna be coming out whenever I DQ. Rawr, there we go. And you know, you could also have a back variable or an end variable or of some sort. Uh, and that would allow you to know basically, let's see if I can do that, there we go. So front and back are basically the same at the start. Uh, they would probably be negative one uh, is what I would set it to because I don't have a front or a back yet. Uh, the queue is empty. As I put things in, boom, I would move one variable down and one variable up. Now, as I added more people, this back would go down the list until I reached wherever the end of the line is. Now, as I DQ people, the front is gonna move down the list. Now, there is a slight problem here. Whenever I wanna put somebody else back in line, well, notice that if I filled all this up and the back is four, I can't just say, well, the line's full because it's not, there's three, slots open now. So what we're going to have to do is program it in such a way we can move the back up to here. This is basically a circular line or circular queue, so to speak. So as I start taking people out, you know, this will move down. Uh, boop. As I start adding more people, well, I can move this down some. Doot, doot. So I can just keep going kind of in a circle until these things end up like this, which means the line will be full again, basically. And we're going to use what's called modular arithmetic for that uh, to basically figure out where the next item needs to go in this nice little circle we're going to make. So let's see how that's going to work. I'm going to use the same program I had before. I had stacks that we made in the previous project. And if you wanted to make a whole new project, that's fine, but we can just do it in this project here. Uh, if you want to just do it in a separate project, just make a new project, call it Q. You'll have a main, which is just going to be blank. And then you can come over here, right click, new Java class, and you can make a Q. Now the queue is gonna have a couple of different methods that we're gonna need. Uh, we've got NQ, which is basically just like our push. We've got DQ, which is essentially our pop, if you compare it to a stack. And then we have display that will display uh, the actual queue so we can see it. Now you'll notice if you were paying attention, the number of lines this has is probably about double or triple what a stack is. Uh, because it's a little more complex with that circular motion there. Now we're going to have a couple of different variables here. 
one Q. I just called it Q. Uh, in stack, I called it S. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but uh, this is my storage area, my little array that I'm going to create to store my information. Max is basically how big my array is going to be. I actually don't technically need that. I just put it in there because it's easier to read. Uh, the Q is. Front is the front of the line. First person out. Size, current size of the line. And back would be the end of the line. So I'm going to use these variables to kind of keep track of where my stuff is. Now I don't necessarily have to use this for integers. I could use this just like with stacks on strings, on objects. I could make a line of people and, you know, make a little burger simulator so we see, you know, how long it takes to serve a certain person. Next person comes in, next person comes in. Uh, there are companies that do use this all the time. Figure out how many servers they need at any given time. If you have, you know, X amount of customers standing around, we need to open up another register. Uh, you'll see a lot of them, they actually have rules where if X a number of customers are there, we need another register and they open it up. Unless you're at Walmart or something where apparently they don't believe in that sort of thing sometimes. Uh, I've been to a couple of stores where like two registers were open and it's like 50 people. Maybe they're short, I don't know, but sometimes it just seems like you know, you can open up like two others and get this done faster. Doesn't always happen that way. Well, anyway, this is the queue. So we have to create what the queue is going to be first before we can actually use it. So with this, we got our variables set up. Now we make our constructor. And it's just going to be public queue, which is same exact as the name of the file. And I'm going to give it this variable called max size. Now max size is just going to be, you know, the size that I want this queue to be basically. Uh, it can't be larger than 10. Maybe I'm in a building and if I stand people back front to back, you know, I only have enough room for 10 people to fit before we are standing outside. So I create an array of that size. And I could make this max and just say this, that max equals max. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you could write this, but it's virtually the same thing. So max, I set the max size. So it knows what the max size of this array is supposed to be. Front is set to zero. That's the array location. Back is set to zero, the array location again, the very beginning. Uh, and size is zero because there's nobody in. The line actually yet so as my uh, line gets bigger size will go up one two three up to max size uh, the back or well, the front will be zero at the start obviously uh, and the back will start moving down so like we saw here the back will start moving down my list like so and then back around depending on who I've taken out and who I put back in. All right, well, this is the queue. Hopefully pretty straightforward. So let's talk about putting people in line. Now this is a little bit more complicated than the stack because in the stack, I'm just throwing them on top. Uh, the, the pop is pretty easy in the stack too because I'm just taking off the top. With this, I have to keep track of the person who's in front, take them off, move that front back and then make sure that that's where I'm going to go to where I'm basically going to go back to. So let's take a look. You'll see there's quite a lot more meat to this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just got a couple of print statements here just so I can see what's going on. Uh, I print that, you know, this number is trying to get in line. Uh, since it's a number, I can just say in. If it was a object or something, you'd get some gibberish here. You'd have to print off, I don't know, a name or just the word customer, whatever it is. But since I'm just putting in a number, it's going to pop out here. And this number could be something as simple as an ID for, let's say, an online game or something. Uh, your ID is thrown into the queue. When your ID comes up, they load you in. So first things first, 
I need to check a couple of things. I need to check to see if I'm whole, if I'm empty, and if it's anything else, that means I'm not empty, I'm not full, but I can still put things into it. So if the current size is equal to the max, size is going to go up every time I put somebody in here. And if I have basically moved up size enough to where it's the same as the max, that means I'm full. So I simply say, you know, they can't enter this line. It's full. And this time I decided to go ahead and make this a Boolean just to have a little bit of difference here. I could have made this a void still, but I try to put in queue something and it's going to return false. That way I know if that event actually happened or not. Now this only occurs if it's full. Now the next if here occurs if my queue is empty completely. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward because my front's pointing to zero, back's pointing to zero. I just put it right there in the front. So line is empty and I just print that so I know what it's saying. Uh, I'm going to put this in the line. So Q in front would be zero in this case is going to be set to N and then I increase the size by one. Now the front and back aren't going to change yet. And the reason for that is there's only one person in line. Zero is the front and zero is also the back so I just keep them the same. Now else, we go to else if there's at least one person in line, but it's not full yet. So we only have three conditions here, and this is the third and kind of the most complex. So the first thing I say is line isn't empty. I'm going to put somebody in line. That way when I'm doing this, you don't have to have that, but when I'm doing this and playing with it, I can see some information pop up. Try to yeah, scroll over so you can see that. It's just a simple print statement. And it's just more information for me. It doesn't have to be there. But Now, the first thing I need to do is set back to go to 1. But there's a problem. What if, you know, I've made it all the way to the end and I'm dequeuing, or let's say my back is at 4 but I've already dequeued a few people, zero, one, two, three are empty. Then I gotta go back to the beginning, right? So this is where this modular arithmetic comes into play. You'll see I'm gonna add one to it, and then I have this percentage max. What that does is it finds the remainder. So if let's say back was four, right? The, the size is five. Uh, but I've already dumped a few people out. so. Size is four, I need to go back to zero. So what I'm gonna do is this percentage max, if I can find the right thing on my keyboard there, percentage max. Well, what is max? Max would be five items, right? Or four items. No, it would be five, okay, it would be five. Uh, so if I set it to five, well, four plus one is five right? Percentage 5 is going to be equal to 0. So 5 percentage 5 is equal to 0. 5 modulus 5 is equal to 0. So what this does is it's going to subtract 5 from this number until I can't anymore. So let's say if I said 6 modular 5, modulus 5, that would be 1 because it's going to subtract 5. I can't take 5 away from it anymore. There's only one left over. It just gives me the remainder, which is 1. And this allows me to basically loop through this thing. So if I'm here, that becomes 5. I use the modular arithmetic to bump it to here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that just lets me come back to the beginning. <clears throat> All right, so that's just going to decide where I'm going to go if I have to go back. Now, if I don't, that's, you know, if I said, let's say, 3 percentage 5. Well, I can't subtract 5 anymore, so it's just going to be 3. Uh, so it won't affect anything there. So this is just going to find where that's going to go if I have to go back. Now, I set the back to be 
equal to this new location, this, this new thing that I just put in, uh, the new back of the line. And then I increase the size by one. So this is probably the most complex part here. Uh, but once you kind of understand how this part works, it's, it's not that different than the rest of it. And of course, at the end of all this, you know, there's only one place where this is going to fail, and that's if it's full. If it's empty, it's going to be true. I could put a return true there. If it's, you know, got somebody in there and I can still put somebody in there, then that's going to be true. I just put one return true and it handles these two cases here. Because if it goes here, it's not going to go anywhere else. It's just going to leave. Now that's in queue. Let's take a look at DQ. Now DQ is pretty much the same. I want to take something out of the line. Now what I take out is whoever's in front, whoever's in that front position. So in this case, DQ is the person in the front. This person comes out and the next person is going to be the new front. Just that simple. Back is going to be the last person that went in and then maybe back would get dumped up here if I added some more folks. And front is going to move down. Duped. Duped. Until basically these are the same again and I've emptied everybody out. But my front could be anywhere because this, this whole line is moving. So let's take a look. The first thing I have to deal with is if the line is empty, there's nobody to take out, right? So since I'm dequeuing, notice I didn't use a Boolean this time I used an int because I'm taking an int out of this thing. I could, if I, did, if I didn't care about the number itself, uh, make this a Boolean, true, false. Uh, but I can just as easily know if it worked or not by returning a negative one. Because I can always check if that's negative one, well, it didn't happen. So I can still uh, know that it happened or not without doing Booleans and, and get that number as well if, I, if it actually did happen. So let's take a look. First option, Q is full or Q is empty. I can't take anything else out. Return negative one. Or else, there's somebody there. I can take them out. Whether it's one person, whether it's 10, it doesn't really matter. So we check, we take that whoever's in front and we store them for a minute. And then we just declare the little print statement that they're gonna leave the line so we can see this is just information for us to visually kind of watch it. And then we set that front to zero. And it's not 100% necessary because we're not gonna technically be able to access it uh, whenever we display anything or put anything in, it's just going to get overwritten. But uh, I like setting it to zero. Just, hey, there's nothing in there. Put it to zero. Uh, if it was an object, I would set it to null. Uh, that way it's empty and you know there's not anything in there. Now, front is going to be, and notice I still have this percentage max here again. Basically, I increase front by one percentage max. Now, if this is the front let's just move the back away for now this is the front i'm taking him off or her or it or whatever it is <clears throat> well if i increase it by one it's five percentage five makes it zero that would move the front back up here like that so front would go here even if this was the end of the line and there wasn't anybody else i would still end up moving front to here this would be empty but of course, if there was somebody here, there we go. Sorry about that. My headphones cut off like after 20 minutes, I think, of no sound coming out. Uh, well, anyway, the front would be here regardless. So, and then I would just move it down if there are people there. And I have the if statement to catch if my entire thing's empty anyway so so we move the front back and whoever is next in line is now the new front we decrease the size which means we know let's say if there was three now there's two people in line and that's how we would check to see if we're empty or not and then i return that in that i saved earlier and 
it goes back, I can store it, I can put it in another line, I could do something else with it, I could check some stats if it was keeping track of things, uh, that sort of thing. And that is DQ. So that allows me to put things in a line, take things out, or display, which is our last item. And you notice this is a little different than the stack. It's a little more complicated because one the front of the line could be anywhere. Uh, it's not necessarily going to start at zero. Uh, the end of the line could be anywhere. Uh, so we have to make this kind of like a little circle with this too. So first and foremost, if the queue is empty, then I just say it's empty, display a little box. Ta-da! Now the way I did my queue, my stack looked like an actual stack going up and down. The Q is going to print diagonal, basically going, or not horizontal, I should say, going this way. Uh, whereas the stack printed vertically, going down. And the front of the Q is going to be on the right. The back of the Q will be on the left, I think. I'll have to double check that. We'll, we'll find out. I think I have it noted anyway, so. So notice I print one item and then I change the front temporarily I have this F I'm not actually going to change the front because that would screw up the whole object together so I make a temporary variable to me my front and I use that to print through this thing and I'm just using a print and not a print line for this uh, that way it prints all on one line I have a little box and Yes, there are ways to print arrays and things like that with built-in Java functions, but not in the middle of it like this, like what we're doing. So I might be in the middle of my array where I need to print. I might need to print two because that's the front. Boom. And then, you know, zero might be the back. Uh, so I have to start here and then work my way back till I get through to the size. So let's take a look. So for int i equals zero, while i is less than size, I'm basically going to go however many are in there, and then I increase it by one. And I'm using this to basically just loop back if I have to. All right, and this right here is just to give me a little space at the end and move down. So let's take a look at the main, um, make a couple of items in here, and we'll see how this runs. So I've still got my stack here, so I'm just going to undo some of my Q stuff that I've already got written. There we go. So I've got a Q of size 5, and I've got about 6 items to in Q here. And I'm just going to comment out the rest of this for now. We're just going to focus on the first couple of items. Alright, so right here, Q. Q, because that's the name of the file, equals new Q, 5, meaning my line only has 5 slots. Now I'm going to put in a 10, a 78, a 7, a 32, a 77, and notice that's 5 items, right? And then I try to put in a 6. That should tell me the line is full. And then I display, and I should be able to display the line. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Alright, well there's my stack stuff at the top, but 10 tries to get in line. The line is empty, and they get in line. 78 tries to get in line. It isn't empty, they do. 7, line's not empty. 32, 77, line's not empty. 98 tries to get in line. They can't enter because it's full. I print my queue here. Now, 10 should be the front. It looks like I went left to right. That's fine. Uh, and 77's the back at the current moment in time. So 10, 78, 7, 32, 77. Voila. Uh, I probably could space that out a little more, but hopefully you kind of get how that works. Uh, let me go back into the queue and maybe add a space there. Make it look a little prettier at least. Let's see here. Add a space there. Add a space there. And... Voila, that looks a lot better, I think, actually. Uh, so I just added a couple of spaces 
before and after the little parentheses inside the display. So I just have these guys. And you see 10, 78, 7, 32, 77. Front, back. So let's see how this handles when I take off a few things. I'll take off, in this case, 10, which means 78 should be the front, right? There we go. It is. Uh, we'll take off the next one, which makes 7 the front. So 10 left, 78 left. One more. That should leave us with 32 and 77. Okay, it did. Now if I keep DQing past what I can DQ, you'll see everybody left and then it just says it's empty. I can't DQ anymore. So what happens when we start, instead of DQing everything, I put a few guys in there again. Uh, Q dot in Q. I can just double click that. And I put in, let's say, five, nine thousand and one. Right? At this point in time, I've DQ'd everything but like these last two. So, 32, 77. 9,000 tries to get in line. Oh, 9,001 tries to get in line. The line is empty. 9,001 gets in the back of the line. Okay. I guess we need to print that. Let's move our display. Where I can see it. There it is at the back of the line. 32 is the front, 77. And I can keep doing this, and it's just going to make a, a nice circle until it's full. So there we go. That is a queue. And of course, we can dequeue a few more things or in queue some things. 32 left, 77, 90, 9001 would be the only ones left. Hopefully, you kind of get how that works. Uh, that's your basic rundown of how a queue works. So with this, we've covered stack, we've covered queue. Uh, those are those two data structures. If you have any, as always, if you have any questions or issues or problems, just let me know, and I'll see what I can do.